Hello and welcome to episode 51 of the Footy with Fletch podcast. In this episode, I'm joined by Greater Western Sydney Giants AFLW draftee, Indy Lind. She was selected by the Giants with pick 40 in the 2023 AFLW draft. Hello, Indy. How are you? And Fletch. It is going to be really good to talk to you today. And and just to get into it first, you have a swimming and athletics background. Tell me a little bit about your involvement with both of those sports. Yeah, so I've been swimming, I started swimming really young, um, competed quite high in that. I did all the squad levels, everything, um, competed on the state teams and stuff, um, which that was more just like a fitness thing for me, I think. Keeping swimming was just such like a, I don't know, it was more for the, like the mental side, I think. Um, and then athletics, that was my main sport. Uh, so I did um, the 800 and 1500 and I competed um, in the Australian Championships for I think about three years in a row. So, yeah, I did take that pretty seriously and I think I think probably the best I came was I think seventh in Australia. Um, yeah. Which is fantastic and mm. I guess it's probably helped with your speed as well because that is one of your attributes with your footy, you're able to break away from the contests really quickly. Would you say that the athletics has, has helped with your speed? A hundred percent. I think not just the speed, but um, I think one of my main strengths in football is my ability just to gut run and my work rate. And I think those individual sports is of swimming and running that has really helped and like correlated into my football, just that ability to put my head down and, and just have, use my running as my weapon really. Yeah. And what AFL team did you support growing up? Who were some of your favourite players growing up as well? Um, Yeah, so followed Essendon, um, still do a bit. And, yeah, I think uh, female side was always Erin Phillips, like always looked up to her a lot. Um, And then, yeah, more recent years, it's just that Kate Hoare, Mon Conti. And then, yeah, from Essendon, it was always Dyson Heppel and Nick Martin were my faves, yeah. Great players indeed. And tell yeah. me a little bit about your football journey. How did you first get involved with footy? Yeah, so I've got um two older brothers. Um, and I think they both played growing up. Like I did start in Auskick and I did love that. Um, but then I did kind of shy away from that and go towards my swimming and my running. Um, but I was always watching my brothers play in their football. And I think I just got to a point where I was like, no, I want to give it a go. So um, talked to my dad and it was r- roughly probably grade five, I think. Um, talked to my dad, talked to one of the coaches at Mombok Junior Football Club. Um, and yeah, we just started a girls team from there, the first girls team at Mombok. Um, yeah, just I just remember going around to all the girls at school, like all my friends and yeah, got the team together. And yeah, played with them um, up until I moved to Mount Ev two seasons ago. So yeah, they were my, just that day why I started playing football really, yeah. And I guess it's really special as well, starting a team from scratch yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that just, when I think of footy, that's what I bring it back to, just that pure love and passion for it. And then you mentioned Mount Evelyn. You won an under-18s premiership there. Yeah. What was it like to be at Mount Evelyn and, and to be involved with the club? Yeah, so I think um, obviously starting at Mombok, I think I got to a point where I just really wanted to focus on my footy. Um, and that next step was moving to Mount Ev, where I knew they had a great girls program. They had really great coaches and really great culture, um, which, yeah, so moving across to there, they just fully embraced me. And, yeah, we went on to win the premiership. And, yeah, it was great. Played some senior games, which really opened me up to playing with bigger bodies and more talent. So, yeah, and this was all whilst going through the Eastern Rangers program as well. So, yeah, they just worked hand in hand, really. And how did you sort of get involved with the Eastern Rangers? What did that process look like? Yeah, so I was actually quite fortunate. I think it was, yeah, I was at um, Eastern Rangers for three years um, and just got that email. Danny Ryan, who was in the Outer East, he actually moved through to Eastern Rangers and he, um, coming from the Outer East, he just saw an opportunity to bring some of those Outer East girls um, from that Bush League into Eastern Rangers and give us a good opportunity there. So I think it purely just came comes down to him just saying something in me and wanting to bring me across into Eastern Rangers. And you played 23 games at the Rangers across those three years. Was there yeah. a particular highlight from your time at the club? 
Um, definitely playing on Icon Park in that grand final, that last game I played for Eastern Rangers before being picked up. Um, but yeah, I think that was just probably the highlight, the peak of it. Yeah. And then at the end of the 2022 season, you suffered stress fractures in both of your shins. How yeah. difficult was it to deal with those injuries and, and what was the rehab like? Yeah, so I came off of the 2022 season. Um, that year we started playing footy, started Eastern Rangers in January. That, that season finished and then I, we went straight into local season. Um, and then, yeah, we went on to win that premiership in 2022. So I was literally playing pretty much every weekend right from January to August. So I think that did um, have an impact on my shins, obviously, and I did get the stress fractures. Um but, yes, yeah, so that meant I was pretty much out from August right through to March. So that meant, like, mentally, like, I had in my head, like, this is my draft year, this is where I want to be, have a whole preseason, have a really good opportunity to start. And I think, yeah, that really was a big setback. But it gave me an opportunity to jump in the gym and work closer with my coaches, um, not just in terms of, like, the on-field training. Like, I was really able to set back and um, grow off the field as well. So when I did come in and get started and I think it was around six where I came in um, after my stress fractures. I think I was just, yeah, that really set me up, I think. And I guess as well, you mentioned missing a portion of pre-season. How hard was it to then, I guess, get into getting match fitness from missing that much footy? Yeah, um, it was really hard because I think gym fitness is so different to footy fitness and I think... um, I did come in and I played a few local games before I was able to come into Eastern Rangers, so that did help out a lot. Um, But I think that running and swimming background, like knowing that my fitness, like I can build it up so easily from there, um, which it was hard and it was, it did take me a few rounds of Eastern Rangers to go get my confidence back and get my confidence back in even the team because I know it was a whole new side, whole new coach, like it was really hard trying to break into that and find where my place was in the team. Um, so yeah, it did take probably three or four rounds before I did find that I was comfortable and able to play my game again. Um, but yeah, just full credits to the club and my project gap that I did gym with and the local clubs, like everyone really got around me and yeah, just made it really easy transition back in. And you also played as an inside midfielder and then on the wing last year. How did you find both of those positions? Yeah, so I think working under Travis Cloak in the, the 2022 season, he played me as a wing because um, I had that running background and I had that ability to run and track the ball. Um, but then coming under Ash Close in 2023, um, I think being in the gym and just getting that game footage, I think um, he saw something in me that he wanted to chuck me into an inside mid and um, he fully backed me into being inside mid. So I think... Actually, coming into Giants this year, I've got a good um, balance of both the wing and the midfield. Um, so I think that just gives me the opportunity in the Giants, really, yeah. And you played 12 games last year for the Rangers, averaging 17 touches, three tackles and three inside 50s. Out of the games that you did play, what did you make of those performances? I think, yeah, like obviously I said, like it takes like, it took me maybe five or six rounds or maybe four or five rounds before I got that confidence back in. Um, But yeah, I think it just came to a point where you just like, it was my draft year. So it was really just like, you got to put your head down and really trust your abilities. And I think by the end of the season, I was um, really getting back to where I wanted to be. Um, But yeah, I just, I, yeah, I loved it. And there were eight players that were signed from the Rangers last year, pre-signed or drafted. What was that like to be alongside those girls to then go on and reach your dreams? I think it's just insane that Eastern Rangers could produce eight players in one season, like still looking back at it, like we were such a strong side and being able to play alongside those top players, it's just incredible. Like, um, yeah, it's just insane, I think. And, um, I think it'd be really exciting to be able to come across all those eight players now at the top level, which is just so bizarre to think about because we played with them for those three years at Eastern Rangers. Then we'll be able to go on and get drafted together. I think it's really special and a really big moment for Eastern. Yeah. It is really special indeed, like you mentioned. 
You nominated for the National Draft Pool over the Victorian Draft Pool. What was sort of the reasoning behind that? Um, I think it was mainly to give myself the most opportunity. I think I had to be realistic with myself and go, right, I did miss all the preseason. I missed those five games. Like I like draft the drafters only have um the back half of the season to base themselves off of for me. And I think I was unlucky to miss out on those big metro games and I didn't go to the draft combine. So I think there was those limited opportunities for me to be seen. Um so I think the national draft was just that option to give myself the most opportunity. And um, Ash Close, he did say there was a bit of talk from a national national club. Um, so, yeah, I just trusted him and, yeah, went national. So, yeah. And did you sort of have any idea that JWS were, were interested in you? I did, actually. I had a bit of fair bit of contact with them um, in the months coming up to the draft. So, yeah, that did kind of obviously I had to be realistic and go look it might not go my way here um but no I did like the interactions I had with the club I just knew like that's where I want to be like yeah it was just yeah really fortunate that they reached out and how did you find the AFLW draft night what was that experience like yeah it was actually um so the draft was on a Monday night I think um, and I actually, the Giants actually contacted me on the previous Friday saying that they were going to pick me up at pick 40. So I think going into the draft night, like I knew I was getting drafted, but um, just being like, I don't know, like I think you saw the video um, of me getting drafted. I was surrounded by like 40 of my family and my friends, just the, yeah, the closest people to me, the people that have like supported me through everything, all my swimming, running, football journey, and just to be surrounded by them and hear my name get called out and just feel the pure excitement that it brought everyone. I think it was just such a special night. And I think that's like the highlight of my football journey, like today. Yeah. That video was, was absolutely fantastic to watch. And do you think it might've helped knowing that you were sort of told the Friday before you're going to get selected with pick 40 because it sort of just eased all that pressure I think so, yeah, and I think um, it made me be able to enjoy it knowing that I could go into it knowing I was getting drafted, but none of my family or friends knew. So it was a really special moment to see them react and, like, I already knew I was getting drafted, so it was more special to, yeah, witness their reactions, which was just, yeah, it was great. And I guess moving interstate, how has that sort of been so far? Yeah, I think... um. All credits to the club and everything. Like I think the majority of the club, they all live out of home, so they all know what it's like to move into state and move into a completely new environment. And I think they've fully made the transition so easy. I think there's been no bumps. There's been nothing. The only thing is missing home, but they have embraced me so well that I actually feel like I actually belong up here. So it's just been such a smooth transition. And it's just, yeah. Not not a fault to the club at all. And when did you move up to, to Sydney? Moved up uh, start of February. So I've been up here for over six months now, I think, if that's right, um, just to get ready for that BFL season to start, yeah. And I guess as well, what are the differences between living in Sydney compared to Melbourne? Because we were talking before, it's I think 12 degrees in Melbourne today, freezing cold. And you mm. said the weather was absolutely perfect up there. Yeah, it's so good. I think even like our training yesterday, I came home and I was a bit sunburnt, which is just so weird to think that we're in July and I'm getting sunburnt. Um, but no, the weather is definitely a big thing that I, yeah, I think I'm just meant to be in the be in the warm. But I think, um, yeah, I do like, obviously like where I'm living now, it is a bit more suburban, which in Melbourne, I live about an hour, hour and a half out of Melbourne. So it's I live in more the bush. So I think I do miss that, um, the environment of living back at home, but yeah, just loving the weather and stuff up here. It's been great. Do you sort of have a, a go-to beach or a go-to place in Sydney where you sort of relax and, and unwind? Absolutely love Bronte Beach. And um, it's actually great because a lot of the girls from the club live live out that way as well. So you can meet, meet up for a swim after the training or go for a walk or a coffee. It's just, yeah, it's just been great. And how has pre-season training been so far? Um, Really good. I actually absolutely love the training side of football. I love the match sims, the running, the conditioning, which I think 
I don't know. I don't know if that's coming from my background, but I love, I love the training side. Um, so I've absolutely loved it, but I think, um, yeah, it's obviously been tough and it's been like, you're just wanting to sleep and eat all day. Um, but no, it's been really good. And I think, um, coming off of last season for GWS finishing 16th on the ladder, I think I knew coming in that it would be a tough preseason for the whole club. So I think mentally I prepared, but yeah, you can only prepare so much. And who have been some of the players that have maybe taken you under their wing early on in your time at the Giants? Uh, there's actually been a fair few, I think. Um, um, Elise Parker, um, Nicola Barr, Beck Beeson, Tani Evans, like they've all just fully embraced me. And I think I can learn so much from such a, from so many of them. Like they've all got so many different skills on different weapons that it's actually been great for me to just pull like little bits of information from all of them. Yeah. And the club recently had their preseason and community camp in Canberra. There was yeah. vision earlier this week of players slipping and sliding in mud. What was it sort of like and what were the fun moments of that? Um, I think for the club, they brought in eight new players this season, which is just huge. Like it's like a whole new team. Um, so I think the real main thing for the camp was just to bond us and really like bring us in as a club. And I think it did exactly that. Like it was so great, like just bound to see the girls outside the club and do those random things like hang those ropes through those fields and slipping over. Like it was just so much fun, but it was just, I think it brought us all together. It made me feel like I was really part of it, which is great as a new player. Yeah. For some people like myself that don't know, how many days a week during preseason are, are AFLW players sort of training and, and in at the club? Yeah, so we're in at the club about four days a week, um, which um, I'll head in again this afternoon, but you're there for from like 8.30 and you don't leave till 4. So it's a full day's commitment. Um but no, I love it and, yeah, it's just been great. And what are you looking forward to most about your first season in the AFLW? Um, I would love to get a game. That's definitely a goal. But I think, yeah, just I think the girls have trained so hard and we're all, like, so united, I think. Um, in all our match teams and stuff, I really see what, like, our coach, Cam Bernasconi, um, like, all his visions and stuff, they're really coming together. So I think... Um, I'm just really excited to see how the girls go and how we come together and play as a team. I think um, it's going to be a great season, yeah. And are there any areas of your individual game that you're, I guess, looking to improve in this season if you do get yeah. that chance? Yeah, I think I really want to work on my contested work as a player and really trust myself to take on players and um, kind of use, yeah, just gain more confidence I think in in my body and what I can do in terms of craft and body work um on players which the club's been really great um helping me out with that and you're going to wear the number 19 jumper at the Giants what is it like to to wear that Guernsey number ah uh, it's great it feels good it's a nice um low number in the middle so yeah no it's great I'm really happy I think I've always worn like either 11 22 or 33 so it's a bit of a change but um no, it's great. I'm just happy to have a number at all, really. It must be so surreal. We've sort of touched on it. You've had that that injury last year during preseason. Did you sort of think 12, 18 months on that you would be on an AFLW list? And, and how surreal has it been? Not at all. Like, if I look at myself this time last year, in the thick of year 12, like, um, yeah, coming back from the stress fractures, like, the last thing, like I was thinking of all the options outside of footy of like how I'm going to get drafted rather than like I'm getting drafted. So I think it's just bit, like it's I'm just constantly pinching myself, like even going to those community camps in Canberra and stuff and like interacting with the kids or like even every day at training, it's just like I'm just so lucky and grateful that the club saw something in me and were willing to reach into Melbourne and pick me up. Like I think. I just, yeah, it's constantly pinching myself. Like, I just love it so much. And you mentioned that you're studying at university. What are you currently studying? Um, doing exercise and sports science at UTS, um, which has been really good just doing it part-time. Um, but, yeah, loving it. And I guess that would sort of go hand-in-hand hand with your mm. footy as well. So how has it been to 
Is that probably the reason why you chose that course? I think so. Like I've always like had an interest in sports, obviously, and I think it's everything I'm learning, it kind of, yeah, it does go hand in hand with um, playing footy. So it's just been, I don't know, it's really good. Like I feel like there, there is that balance of all my training as well as pushing myself academically, which I really pride myself on. And um, I think, yeah, it's just been, yeah, it's a great course, loving the content. And I think, yeah, it works really well with what I'm doing outside of it. And what is one motto that you might live by when you're out on the field? Um, I think maybe not on the field, but like whenever I'm training, like you're, you're always going to get out what you put in. And I think throughout like my whole sporting journey from little athletics, swimming, whatever it is, like you're only going to get out however many hours or work or those extras that you're willing to put in. And I think, um, even when I came out of my stress fractures, I think it would have been really easy for me to go right, like I am 18, it's my draft year, they're going to give me a game. Whereas I had the mentality of, no, like I have to earn it, I have to do those extras, I have to communicate with the coaches and get that feedback because, like, that's the work that you're going to, if you're willing to put it in, you're going to get it out. And I think that really showed um, in everything I've done, yeah. And what was probably the most important or, or one piece of advice last year that you received that really stood out to you? Um, I think just, yeah, put your head down and just trust yourself. I think a big thing for me is just having that confidence in my abilities. And I think sometimes I can get caught up in um, the technical side of footy, um, but I just have to trust myself and really trust that I will get where I need to be. And what position can we expect you to play this season at the Giants if that opportunity does arise? Um, I think uh, I've been training a lot on the wing. But there's also, I'm about 60% wing, 40% inside mid. So um, hopefully that opens up my opportunities a little bit. But I'm, yeah, loving both positions at the moment, actually. So, yeah, I actually couldn't tell you which one it'll be. And a couple of quick fire questions. Are there any pregame superstitions that you have before a game? If so, what are they? Um, I know it makes it hard, but I always go for a kick with my dad the morning before a game. So obviously he lives in Melbourne and I'm up in Sydney, so that might be a bit hard. But um, always just have to go for a kick that morning to get out those jitters and get myself focused. Do you have a favourite professional sports team outside of an AFL side? I actually don't follow much sport outside of AFL. So I think I'm actually very excited for the Olympics to come up because follow the swimming and the running, which will be good, yeah. It'll be great to hopefully see the Aussies dominate mm. in the pool. Agreed. Do you have a go-to coffee order if you do drink coffee? Um, Don't drink coffee often, but I love a good almond latte. Do you have a nickname of the Giants? If so, what is it? Um, Indy Lindy, which I think that just comes from my name. I think a lot of people see the Indigo Lind, Sean Indy, Indy Lindy. That's just, I've always gotten that throughout all of footy. Yeah. And are there any hobbies or interests that you have outside of footy? Um. Absolutely love just going for a swim, going for a ocean, whether it's the ocean pool, going for walks, just, yeah, meeting up with those people around me, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lindy, for jumping on, Indy, for jumping on today. <laughs> See, I've done well. it there. That's a bit of a blooper. But anyway, thanks again for your time. It was great to talk to you and all the best of luck for the upcoming season. Thanks, Fletch. Loved it.